Podcast First, sponsored by Natex Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Strong winds today across central Illinois. If you were driving on the area interstates, boy, that was uh, kind of white knuckled there for a while as those southerly winds blowing across those east west routes. 50 plus mile an hour gusts have been recorded out there. 36 is now the gust in Champaign, 31 in Springfield, but at least it was warm and that wind helped to bring those temperatures back up into the 60s again. Still sitting at 65 in Springfield and Effingham as we take a look at the satellite radar picture. A lot more in the way of cloud cover today as we await the approach of a system that's going to bring us a little bit of rain. A few showers possible later tonight, but we think the best chance of rain is going to arrive later tomorrow. We've got wind, we've got rain, storms, and much cooler air in the forecast. We'll have that coming up. WCI3 News starts right now. Now on WCIA3 News. State lawmakers are back in session. Why hotels and convention centers topped the debate. Plus, more tires have gone flat. Where security video shows there may be a copycat. And the Johnson & Johnson vaccine has been delivered. Which central Illinois community got the first doses? You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 5. Talking about 120,000 lost jobs. Every day, another door closes on a theater, on a restaurant. A growing number of Democrats are calling on Governor Pritzker to reopen hotels and convention centers shuttered in the pandemic. Good evening, I'm Paul Chikini. And I'm Jennifer Roscoe. Republicans have called on the governor to relax restrictions. But now pressure is mounting from within his own party as the state Senate gets back to action. Our Capitol Bureau Chief Mark Maxwell is live in Springfield with the latest. Mark, senators are anxious to get the economy up and running again. And Jennifer, today we saw more senators voting in the same room at the same time than we've seen at any time over the last year. That image alone, sign of somewhat of a return to normal, though there were face coverings and some social distancing still taking place. But in talking with these lawmakers on the floor and in private, it's clear that the coronavirus and all the damage from it is dominating their discussion, their ideas. For example, State Senator Sarah Feigenholz wants the governor's office to hurry up and put a plan in place to help hotels and convention centers in the hospitality industry reopen quickly, using vaccinations as one of those key metrics. But it's not just recovering from the economic losses. Senator Democrats also want to make permanent some of the electoral gains they made. For example, in expanding election laws to allow vote by mail and curbside ballot drop-offs. Our expanded vote by mail was really well received, very popular, helped so many people vote that might not have due to the pandemic. And But now we're seeing that this is a preferred choice. A lot of people prefer this option. So I think you're going to see voting by mail is is the way that more and more people do it. Uh, we want to make sure that it is accessible to everyone and that it's easy and safe. We're going to see a lot of that discussion around what habits and changes during the coronavirus they liked, which ones, of course, more painful, the job losses we didn't, and they want to move on from those. We're seeing the early stages of all those issues coming into clearer focus now. The governor's office confirming tonight the vaccine rollout will play a role in how quickly the state can bring convention centers uh, and big crowds back indoors. In a statement tonight, a spokesperson from the governor's office telling us, quote, the administration has always welcomed input from the industry and members of the General Assembly and hopes vaccine allocation and uptake will increase in the weeks ahead as we inch closer to a new normal. Tonight at 6, a closer look at how the Pritzker administration doled out many of those relief dollars to businesses who claimed they were impacted by the pandemic. Reporting in Springfield, Mark Maxwell, WCIA 3, your local news leader. Yeah, Target 3 investigation there, Mark. Thank you so much. The House and Senate filed a combined total of almost 7,000 new bills. They have until May 31st to debate and pass the budget. Lawmakers are working to expand COVID relief and help recover lost jobs. The governor is calling for lawmakers to approve ethics reform, a clean energy proposal, and to phase out tax breaks for businesses. Illinois State Police being sued over concealed carry licenses. The Illinois Rifle Association says ISP is delaying giving them out. State law requires ISP to either approve or deny applications within a set amount of time. 90 days if the application has fingerprints, 120 days if it doesn't. The IRA says it's taking longer than that. State Police didn't comment. 
Homeowners in Springfield are being asked to play a role in solving the recent rise in crime. The city's police department is encouraging people to partner with them by registering their home surveillance cameras. Last year, Springfield police partnered with the Ring Neighbors app that records videos of what's going on outside their front door. Springfield's deputy chief of criminal investigation says it's a fairly easy process and they would appreciate cooperation. We have some new information tonight. Just a day after someone punctured tires on 100 cars, a woman had her tires slashed by a different person. You can see that person on camera right there. On March 2nd, during the middle of the day, Lynette Frazier was told by neighbors her tires had been slashed the day before. She'd seen the news about the mass tire damage done near her neighborhood. But now that Dallas Bone's been arrested and charged, it's clear in her security camera recording it's not the same person. Frazier was the only house hit on her street. She thinks this was possibly personal. What joy did that person get out of slashing my tires? I don't understand that. Frazier did file a police report with Urbana police, and we will have more on this story tonight at 6. At least one school district is changing protocol with fewer cases of COVID. GCMS schools are removing congestion and runny nose from the symptom list that could keep students out of class. All others on that list still have to be considered. This week, the district had just one positive case at the grade school and none at the other two buildings. The seven-day positivity rate in Champaign County is at its lowest point in more than six months. It's now 2.1% down from 2.3%. The last time it was that low was in late August. Region 6 is also at 2.1%. That's for the third straight day. 50 people are hospitalized. That's the lowest number since mid-July. A state's seven-day positivity rate has dropped to 2.6%. There are almost 1,700 new cases. 30 more people have died. Some of the first doses of that Johnson & Johnson vaccine are coming to Vermilion County. Carl Hoopston Regional Health Center is getting 2,400. WCI3's Abigail Metch is live in the newsroom tonight. So, Abigail, are they putting shots in arms yet? Not yet, Paul. The first shipment of the vaccine just arrived today. Carl Hoopston is the first to get it because it's a critical access hospital. This means they serve people in more rural or underserved communities. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine requires only one shot. Health officials say many people are eager to get it because of its convenience. When you schedule an appointment with Carl, you can't choose which vaccine you get. But the Hoopston Hospital administrator says it doesn't matter as long as you get a shot. The bottom line is if you can receive a vaccine, get it. It doesn't matter if it's Moderna or Pfizer or Johnson & Johnson. A vaccine is better than no vaccine, so we're happy to accept those vaccines. Only people who are eligible in Phase 1A or 1B who live in Vermilion County can sign up to get the vaccine. Carl says it still has about 1,900 Moderna vaccine doses to give out before the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is used. The vaccine are given at the Village Mall in Danville. To learn more about how to sign up for an appointment, visit our website at WCIA.com. In the newsroom, Abigail Match, WCIA 3, your local news leader. Good information, Abigail. Thanks. Here's an update now. If your daily drive takes you across the Tilton Road Bridge that crosses I-74 in Vermilion County, you need to find another way. It's located west of the Georgetown Road interchange in south of Danville. IDOT's replacing the entire bridge. That means crews will be working both on the bridge and on the interstate below. It's expected to be finished in November. For the first time in 30 years, IDOT is updating its communication center. The project costs $7 million, and it's not done yet. WCI3's Jen Lask is with us. So how will this new center help people in Illinois? Jennifer, the data and traffic cameras that operators are watching right here in Station 1 in Springfield will shape what drivers face every day all over the state. The video wall will allow operators to track IDOT snow and ice and emergency patrol squads. Staff will also be able to monitor road conditions, including flooding, and work with teams in the field and other agencies. Previously, there were two operators typically that would work in the communication center in the capital. Now, it's 10 and still growing. Officials say the center will help them spread the word on social media and online faster. All of that allows us to notify the public of incidents that may be occurring on those roadways that they're traveling in closer to real time after those incidents have occurred. 
IDOT is also working on a new statewide incident reporting system, upgrading traffic cameras, and adding more statewide fiber. This past winter, or current winter, some of the snow and ice fleets in central Illinois were part of a pilot program for IDOT. They added dash cams that could snap and send pictures out from the fleets, and there was one that was taken in Paris as well. This one right here that could expand statewide, and they're looking to do that next winter. All right, thank you. The governor makes a stop at Parkland College. We'll tell you what he's promising for the future of education in Illinois. A plus, he played for two seasons for the orange and blue. What Meyer, Myers Leonard said to be in the national spotlight, one he doesn't want.